Hey everyone, Ben Cooper Radio, episode number 240. It is post Christmas. We are into 2017. It's going to be a beautiful year because every year is beautiful. And one thing I definitely learned, and we're going to speak about this a lot today, one thing I definitely learned over 2016 is once you get older, and I'm 30, so I consider myself getting older officially, life just moves so bloody quickly. Like, it literally, I'm looking at my 2016 planner now and all the stuff that I had planned, like the tour that I did around the UK, which was in August and September, like when I went to Spain, like just so much of last year, it feels like it was four or five weeks ago. And in fact, it was four or five months ago. And from the mindset of making myself a very productive person in my kind of work and business life. Um, and with that being said, uh, I thought me and Rachel, hello, Rachel. Hello, Benny. Happy New Year to everybody and happy New Year to you. That was a massive time lag. Well, I didn't, I hope our Wi-Fi isn't like that for the whole of the uh, episode. But um, yeah, no. <laughs> were you just asleep? No, I was no, no. I was like waiting for you to finish. Like you're, you're like you're talking, but the uh, the video's going blah, 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 and then it stops. Anyway, I'm here now, and I, it seems to be okay. So, <laughs> hello and happy new year. She's I wasn't here. Asleep. Uh, the fox hasn't been on the show for a little bit, and I was co- sort of planning the show, and I thought, right, it's the turn of a new year. Why don't me and Rachel talk about how we feel ourselves, and maybe a few industry insights how we feel things have gone for us in 2016. And I'm a massive fan, and I know Rachel is, of just reflecting, looking back, looking at where we can improve and looking ahead of the year. Like, I'm a big fan of not, you know, leaving everything till the start of a year and saying, right, at this date, I'll decide to change and do things. But, you know, with a year, it, it, it allows you to stand back and just generally look at that year and say, Am I happy with how that's gone? Would I change anything? What are my goals for next year? So I've definitely spent some time over Christmas looking at my last year, working out what I'm not happy with and kind of looking to move forward into 2017. So me and Rachel are going to share our experiences uh, with you today. And hopefully, I think more than anything, it will give you some context of how you can think about your life and what you're doing. And me and Rachel are going to talk about um, maybe the physical and health side of our last year, uh, maybe the professional side of our last year, and maybe a little bit, if it's relevant, of the personal side of our year, and again, looking forward. And if we kind of cover all those aspects of our lives, hopefully we'll be able to help you with wherever you are at right now in your journey. So, um, look, Rachel, I've been yabbling on for a minute. Um, how do you feel your 2016 has been and what have you kind of thought about being reflective over the last week or two looking into next year um i guess for me it's been really the past the past quarter um i i always tend to reflect on everything in quarters so if i look at 2016 as a whole um i have to say obviously of course it's been an amazing year um david and i got engaged and and we got married um and you know, just some amazing things have, have happened um, in 2016, um, all of which um, I've worked very hard for. So, um, you know, Chase, we launched um, a new business, Chase Life, at the very end of 2015. Um, that has been um, very successful. We've, we've helped over uh, 60 women overcome things like perfectionism, binge eating, eating disorders, um, and stress and anxiety to help them become happy, healthy, and confident. And um, of course, that in- includes fat loss, which is which is, is my bread and butter. Um, the Athletic Fox Blueprint, um, my online training and nutrition program, that's gone from strength to strength. Um, there was a lot of anxiety for that for me at the beginning of the year because I had to outsource the the technical rebuild and that was then out of my control and out of my hands. And I have to say, like, I'm still a little bit nervous with the Athletic Fox Blueprint because it's now such a complicated system. I don't know every single detail of actually how that works. And that, that does cause me um, a little bit of anxiety, particularly when things go wrong and, you know, things don't work and I don't know how to fix them and then I have to outsource. And so, you know, it's, it's not always as, as simple and as easy as it looks on the outside. 
So look, just looking at that, that's that's a professional business based anxiety that you have because something is out of your control. So yes. what strategy or what do you do in your day or your week that helps you manage that anxiety? Because it sounds like a very functional anxiety that you can manage. Oh, of course. And you know, at the end of the day, it's like it's it's completely in my control really like I you know I have a very good tech guy and um, he's in the US um, and he's always accessible he's usually at all hours um, for me it's I, I'm battling my inner perfectionism and that's what it comes down to like I want to have control of, of everything and I want to know how every single aspect of my business works in minute detail but there's nothing wrong with that but there is something wrong with it when it comes at the cost of you not growing your business so the Athletic Fox Blueprint we're into now, this will be our fourth year of, of running. And of course, every year um, things have grown, uh, things have changed. I've changed a lot of the content last year. And with that is a change in business and a change in business model. Now, if I'm going to grow the Athletic Fox Blueprint or chase life to to where you know where my goals are um, over the next sort of three to five years, then inevitably I'm gonna need a team. And with the tech side of it, you know, the, the, you know, the tagging and the way that the system is built, on the outside, the Athletifox Blueprint looks really simple. But on the inside, it's a lot of programming and it's something that is way out of my, my comfort zone and it's something that's way out of my realm of knowledge. And so therefore, I have to rely on somebody else in order to be able to do that. So I do have, you know, how do I manage that on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I just have to manage my state. I have to uh, manage my expectations. I have to manage the fact that I know that if somebody something goes wrong, then I have to call somebody to, to help me fix it. Um, do I ask them what they've done? Yes, of course I do. But I've also got myself to a stage where I understand and I realize that I cannot do everything in my business. And that I have to rely on other people and I have to rely on staff in order to be able to to grow and to develop the business in order to then to help more women in health and fitness. I think um, I'd like to tie in a learning that I've had this year with your kind of situation, what you're talking about working with other people, because I think perfectionism is a, an emotion that a lot of people will struggle with. And mm -hmm. everyone in and whatever you do has a certain way of doing things. I have a certain way of getting out of bed and living my life just like everyone else does. So I have to appreciate that that is my way and other people will not do it my way. Now I'm similar to you in that I want things done properly, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, You know, I wanna kind of have a certain amount of control because I have an ability that I want utilized to kind of almost perfect what I'm trying to do but I think two things here one you have to realize that if someone can get 80 90 95 percent close to where your bar is set that is good enough that is still going to be to a very high standard secondly it's our job as kind of creators and if anyone in any walk of life is leading someone else in any capacity and you could be in a job you could be in a position of some kind of power you know which is all throughout life it's our job to kind of anticipate what other people will not think about so you know you can't say well my mind thinks like this so my expectation is if I tell you how to do this you will do it all exactly how my mind works but they won't They'll do it 60, 70, 80, 90% of how you laid out and how you think because that's your brain and not their brain. So like, for example, as someone that runs a team, runs companies, runs different things, I have to think in front of other people. I have to say, right, we've got this thing being built or this project that's being facilitated. I know that X person thinks like this. So I'm gonna think a step ahead and be ahead of them and to write something in my diary, for example, I'm going to check in with X on this date about this because I bet that they've forgotten about X or they've forgotten to look at this because that's just how their brain works. So I don't get like all pissy and go, oh, you forgot about this. I told you about it. 
when you are completely aware of how that person operates. And we need to look at this from a relationship point of view, a personal development point of view, a career point of view, because relationships are all around us. Behaviours are all around us. So if you know that your partner does X, it's like we, a lot of us are going to be in love with someone. Now that person we are in love with is not a perfect person. It might not be the exact way that we would build them if we would build the mannequin and the emotions to this perfect person. But they all have our perks and we love them and we work around them. So it's like looking at the relationship, oh, I know my girlfriend does this, so I do this to kind of get one step in front because I know she always forgets to put the bins out or, you know, whatever. It's the same in all areas of life. So I think that's been a big learning for me to kind of not fight that and appreciate it and just understand that it is what it is. Absolutely. And, you know, just with perfectionism, it, like, as David said, like, it's the, the, it's the art of missing the big picture. And, you know, it's all very easy to get wrapped up in perfectionism. You know, obviously, for us it can be more around business and you know you we can all find ourselves in a perfectionist pit it's just about how quickly you can pull yourself out of it um, and I think a lot of people find themselves in a perfectionist pit over diet and training and oh I, you know I'm missing a training session I've eaten a bad food so therefore it's then a bad week and then it's you know oh I'll start on Monday so you know perfectionism is a big thing and there's a lot of um, shame associated with perfectionism because the only reason why somebody's perfectionist in the first place is because they're trying to get away from being criticized when actually when somebody is a perfectionist in all areas of their life and then some and then you know because we're all human if you then forget to do something or if you let your standards slip a little bit then guess what the floodgates are open for somebody to say oh well you know, usually your standard is higher than that. So really, you know, I think it, a lot of it comes down to like everybody's human and everybody's just trying to do the best possible thing that they can do. Um, so yeah, that, that's a... So this, that's what, this is perfect because it ties into a second learning of mine this year. Yeah. And that is that communication solves every fucking problem that exists. Totally. Everything. I, yeah. I second that one. That's a big one for me too. Communication. And again, this is everywhere in life. Relationships, business, just everything. If you communicate everything, things don't fuck up. Like There's a few things that we didn't communicate properly in our business and it screwed up. We paid the price. What could have improved it? Communication. Mm. And yes, of course, planning that further communication. In a relationship, if you don't talk about stuff, things break down, things get harder. It's just... I think, if anything, if you sit there and think, should I say this or should I communicate it, you should say it straight away. As soon as you are second guessing it, just say it because it doesn't matter if it's already been said. It doesn't matter. Like you're you're not putting anyone out. It might take, you know, 30 seconds for someone to read a text message or an email or whatever. Just over communicate everything and the world will be such a better place. And I've just seen so much screw up over the last year for me and things that I've been involved in where if we'd have communicated better, everything would have been solved much quicker. Um, which also comes down to um, another point, um, which would be, I guess, what another one of mine would be um, being innovative. Um, you know, we have, uh, we've been very innovative in what we've done this year um, with Chase Life and, you know, it's um, business is never easy, and if it looks easy on the outside, then there's a shit ton of hard work that's being done behind the scenes. And you know, there's a lot of work that goes behind, for example, um, a campaign or um, getting clients into a, a brand new um, a brand new business. And you know, there've been many many hours where you know I've put um, emails together and I've put a, a, like a sales funnel together, and it hasn't worked, and the market hasn't taken up on it. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll be perfectly like you know full full honesty here. Like I we put um um kind of like a guide together, like a little thing on um and we called it "Is This It?" So I put it together because a lot of women that I talk to, and I say women because I generally deal with women, um, but this goes for guys as well. A lot of women kind of go through their life, and you know I actually released this mid year, and it was called "Is This It?" 
because a lot of women say, mm, is this it? Like they kind of get to that stage in their lives where they're like, you know, 30 plus, um, you know, they're going to work, they've got a good salary, they're in a maybe an okay relationship or maybe a good relationship, but there's there's still aspects of life that are missing or they thought that it was going to be different to what it is. And they kind of sit back and they think, oh, is this it? Like, is this really it? Like, is this what life is supposed to be like? Because I kind of thought that it was going to be better than this or different to this. Um, so this this article, you know, this guy ebook that we put together there was all about you know how to change your life if you're feeling like is this it and nobody it was just it would it fell flat um you know we we had a few people interested in it but i i thought literally that this was gonna this was gonna take off and it didn't so you know one of the ways in which we were very innovative like we just scrapped it pulled it off facebook and um, pulled down the 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 um, email campaigns and i was like right this has got to change what are people really struggling with um and so basically I went back and I looked at the market and I thought, okay, so what is it that we do in Chase Life? How can we, um, how can we help people? Um, and how can we get that link between identifying that you know some people are looking for help, and then how do we um, kind of draw them in and, and make them understand that it's not just about diet and calories anymore, and it's about you know their relationship with themselves. Um, so yeah, we have to basically go back to the drawing board. So that's one thing I'm really proud that we've done this year is be innovative and look, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of the fuck's sakes that go up, um, along the way when you've, you know, when you put your heart and soul into something and there's been hours of work behind it and then you just decide to scrap it. But it's also a very satisfying feeling to know that you're able to do that. Mm. This is where the world of being self-employed or business or really being in a, career path that demands quite a bit of you like let's say you know anyone probably earning 30 grand plus a year is probably got a certain amount of pressure in their job to perform at a certain level Mm -hmm. because their salary warrants that there is the pressure there so i think one thing that um uh, yeah we've missed and this is where business is tough when you're looking at so many different angles is I spent so much time and energy on awesome supplements making it completely perfect that other things suffered and didn't innovate. And I'm now going, ah, fuck, 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 you know, and kicking myself thinking we're now behind here, we're now behind here, the industry's doing this. And, you know, I've prided myself on being innovative, even with if it's with information throughout my career, and that's one way Mm -hmm. I've been able to get ahead. And that is for me a reflection to say did I always prioritize the most important thing at any given opportunity you know when I should and thought I should have been sitting down doing my emails or whatever should I have been going right I need to temperature check my business I need to temperature check body type nutrition or Ben Coomba or awesome supplements or whatever it is I need to see where we're at and I didn't do that enough and now I'm paying the price for it because I didn't prioritize my time enough um, in the things that were really, really important. So that's that's another lesson for me, and I, I'm being hard on myself because I do not want 2017 to go that way. I, I expect a lot from myself. I put a certain amount of pressure on myself because I want that. I want to see the personal mm. progression that I can make on a professional level every single week. And there's so much of 2016 that I regret, and I'm saying to myself, right, with the right kind of planning and the right kind of uh, structure, I am not going to make those mistakes next year. I'm going to make time for innovation. I'm going to make time to keep on top of my creativity. I'm going to make time for all of this. And if I can't spend as much time answering Facebook messages or you know all that kind of stuff, then so be it. Because actually what's really important is that. Because I can't handle the emotion of if it doesn't happen again. Oh, I completely agree. And I've been seeing a lot, actually, of, you know, people saying, oh, 2017 has been my worst year ever. And I don't think anything is ever a worst year. It's just you should reframe that as to, okay, so what have I learned from this year? (laughs) What am I going to change? And what am I not going to do again next year? Um, And very similar to you, you know, running two businesses opposite ends of the world. uh, You know, all my energy has been really in to into chase life this year and, and athletic fox has you know i wouldn't say suffered but it's certainly taken um taken the back seat and you know f- with relentless problem solving countless work hours you know i've 
sat back and I thought initially I thought well I can't do it all and then actually really if I really think about it and I'm brutally honest with myself um my heart just has has been in one area and not the other and I really now have to if I want to continue running those two then I absolutely have to make 50 50 times so that's that's one of my learnings from 2016 and I think you know when people say it's been the worst year ever like what did you learn you know be brutally honest with yourself and it's probably your fault and you know there are external things as well that you know there are some tragedies that happen throughout various different years and there are some things that are completely out of your control but it's completely within your control about how you uh, react to these things and the action steps that you take in order to move your life forward. Mm. So an example of that one of the reasons or one of the things that contributed to 2016 being a difficult year is this probably the year where I've had the most online personal attacks. And a lot of them have been mm-hmm. personal rather than kind of professional. They've been a bit more kind of uh, gritty in their approach. But all of that stuff that's happened has done great things off the back end of it and has exposed things that maybe I am not doing well enough. I have said to myself, okay, have I miscommunicated that? Have my values gone awry anywhere? Could I have worded that better? Oh, have I not done this? And everything that's happened, although it's been painful and it's been hard to take, and some of it has been, you know, unwarranted, some of it has been based on, you know, fact. And I I then had to stand back and go, fuck, that really hurt. But I'm either going to fucking whinge about it and go away and not come back out or I'm going to go away I'm going to reflect I'm going to change and I'm going to come back and I'm going to come back fighting and although it's been tough it's made me a lot stronger and you know that's I suppose that's the beautiful thing about failure is that it teaches you that the next big punch will be a lot harder to take because you've already had a lot of other punches and the punches as you progress in life the punches only get bigger like we get older The money gets bigger because we're older, we have mortgages, cars, kids, like all that kind of stuff. When we in- increase in our professional career, the, the damages just get bigger, the falls might be bigger. Like, let's say you're in a good job and you lose it. Like That's gonna hurt more than if you had a 20 grand a year job and you're only starting out. Everything's gonna be bigger and harder, so how are you bulletproofing yourself to take those hits? Because they ain't gonna get easier. They're only gonna get easier if you allow your mentality to make those hits easier. So I, sp- I think, if anything, 2016 has probably been a year that's made me, I'm not gonna say bulletproof, because I'm only human, but it's made me a lot mm. more resilient to what might come in the future. That's awesome. And again, like, you know, you've reflected on it and you've taken, you know, you take what is useful and discard what is not out of any and every single situation. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about, um, I guess in business, um, and then I guess we can move on to the health and the personal stuff. But one one thing that I wanted to talk about is that, you know, and we talked about this before we went live, is that we can't help everybody. And I see this a lot, and I've spoken with many colleagues about it who work with people on an on an elite level, and that's that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And you know. We make people jump through hoops to, to get into our Change This Life program, but still, when it sometimes when it comes down to the crunch, the difficulty in them changing is just too much for them, despite the fact that we will spe- literally handhold them, spoon feed them, um, get some people on extra coaching calls. When it really comes down to the change, they are so reluctant to change. Um, and that's really difficult from a coaching perspective. Like my heart and soul, and I know David does too, like it gets poured into our clients, whether that's in, you know, for my girls in, in the Athletic Fox Blueprint and anybody who I work with, like I literally will bend over backwards for them to make sure that they get the results. The difficulty is, is that I find it quite frustrating and I, I'm quite innovative in different ways that I that I work with people. I find it really hard when you get those maybe one or two clients who just don't make the change and don't do the work. Um, And, you know, you've got to kind of sit back and you you think as a coach, well, okay, could I have done things better? And, of course, like, 
you know, there are some things that along the way you work with people and you think, oh, actually, I would have done that differently. Yeah, I would have done that differently. But then there are some clients as well. You just think, I just, I did everything that I could. And I think as coaches, you know, and there's a lot of personal trainers who um, work. Can you hear me better now? Um, you know, there's a lot of personal trainers out there who um, who do struggle with some clients. And I think as long as you ask yourself the question, did I do everything in my power, and did I do everything I knew possible to help this client? If the answer is yes, then you can't help everybody and I think that's what it comes down to and spend your energy and then again like on the reverse of that you know spend your energy on those clients who are doing the work and doing well and really want to make a change because I found myself um, over the past couple of years spending a lot of time trying to get people to a point where they say that they want to be but they're not doing the work to get there. Mm. So drawing I suppose a real world example on how someone's ability to help you is pre-medicated. Pre- what's the word? Pre-driven? Pre-medicated? What's that word? Pre, pre, pre-empted? Pre-me- pre-meditated, that's it. I was trying to think of murder. <laughs> someone's ability to help you um, is pre-meditated on your ability to want and to be ready to change. Like if you came to me and even if you wrote me a Facebook message and you're not ready to receive that answer and help, then do not send that Facebook message. You will waste my time. You will waste your own time because you have not already chosen and decided that whatever Ben says, I will take that message on board and I will implement it. Now, we launched our Fat Loss for Life. We launched our Fat Loss for Life uh, group coaching program earlier on in 2016, around September time, I think. And it's amazing that when you take a group, big group of people on board, um, you see the kind of percentages of human behavior and where people are at. And there's like 20, 30% that are ready, they've decided to change, they're going to implement it. There's 20, 30% that have decided that they might be ready to change and if there's some real nugget and kind of golden thing that they might implement it and hope it will be you know that thing that they're kind of missing you know they are still looking for the magic answer and there is that 20 30 percent that have decided to do something to appease an emotion that says that they should change and regardless of what happens they will not change because they are just appeasing an emotion that they feel that they should have from an environmental pressure somewhere and it's amazing because those people will complain at the first sight of any problem they're just looking for something to kind of um, pick up on so that they can not blame themselves for not implementing And the reason why I say this is in the first week of our Fat Loss for Life program, we had a couple of problems. We we didn't anticipate um, kind of some difficulties people would have with the admin side of setting up themselves on the program. We made it a bit too hard. Anyway, we fixed that, but the problem remained. Now, there was a group of people that complained really heavily. There was another group of people that said, oh, I'm having problems. Can you help? Like, I've done this. I've not done that. Can you show me what I've done? Can you check? Awesome. We helped. And then there's another group of people that were like, oh, it's all right. I found a way. I just quickly Googled it or, you know, I watched the YouTube video or I asked a friend and I've done it. And that problem instantly showed to me how the group was going to pan out straight away because there was a clear divide in how people behaved to the first sniff of a problem that put the onus on them to be ready to change. And my fat loss, our fat loss for life program will give you everything that you need to lose body fat, reclaim your health and empower yourself if you choose to follow the advice. But I just found it amazing that as working as a practitioner for years, I look at all these percentages and I get, and this is the difference between an average coach and a great coach, I know that I can change that extra 20, 30% of people by doing the right stuff and it's usually about the mindset. But if I don't do that and the information is just presented, there is just a genuine like 30, 30, 30 split of how people behave 
and accept the problems in front of them and the ownership that they need to take. Oh, com- completely agree. And I think you've just nailed it on the head right there. And it comes down to the fact that we, we actually wrote a blog post on it saying you just haven't decided to lose weight yet. Because when you decide to do anything, so when I decided that I wanted to leave Australia <clears throat> to come back to the UK, I made a decision. When I dis- when we decided to start a new business with Chase Life, we decided to do it and it's been really, really, really fucking hard along the way. Really hard. When you decide to do something, you inevitably will come up with roadblocks, with barriers, and you know what? You just have to break through them, whether that's with fat loss, whether it's in business, whether it's with your health. You just get on your head, put your head down, and you've decided. And there is no going back. There is no alternative. You decide and you press play and you you go and here's the thing with like you know setting goals and stuff and you know people do all these goal setting in 2017 end of 2016 beginning of 2017 which is great learn to execute and decide and once you've decided there is no going back because here's the thing this is what people do they set a oh i'd like to lose weight they think they've decided to lose weight and they haven't they just think that they have and then as soon as it comes to a bit of a roadblock or, you know, in Australia, it would always be around Australia Day. So people would start their, you know, their new diet on January the 1st and then it comes to the 26th of January and Australia Day, you know, everyone's out on, on their boats and drinking and, you know, having some good Aussie foods. Um, that kind of then goes out the window. And what then happens is that puts actually a dent in your self-confidence because then you, you learn to, you don't... There's no trust there anymore. So you promised yourself something and you've broken that promise. You've broken that trust. And this is the cycle that happens all the time with dieting. So you promise yourself, all right, I'm going to lose weight. But then you go and break that promise because you start some ridiculous diet plan that clearly doesn't work. But then the reference experience that you've had is that I'm a failure, I can't diet, and I don't trust myself. So it goes around and around and around. And so when you decide to do something, just understand that there will be roadblocks and success is never linear. It's always you go up a little bit and you go around in circles and then you might step back a little bit and then you have to take what you've learned, like, you know, change something, be innovative, try something else, find a better, find a coach, find a better coach, find somebody who truly understands you and sees you as a whole. Um, you know, I've had coaches all along my career in, in, in business for my my personal coaching and, you know, my, my training. Um, so, yeah, be innovative, decide to do something, and then there is no going back. There is only one road ahead of you, and it's a one-way road. This is something that I obviously knew and I think has been reinforced to me a lot with the influence of Stephen H over the last sort of nine months in body type nutrition. Stephen H, he's the guy that came on the podcast a while back and spoke about mindset and runs the mindset stuff at body type nutrition. But, you know, a simple thing he always goes on about is we choose to have everything that's in our life. We choose an emotion. Mm -hmm. We choose to let someone annoy us. We choose to not go through with something. We choose to eat the cake when maybe we shouldn't do we choose to order the pizza when we should maybe have you know the the fish and potatoes or whatever whatever it is we choose everything and yeah the amount of people that i meet and i've said this before the amount of people i meet at events and i've seen them two years prior and i know that they are have bags of potential bags of potential they're beautiful people they are clever they are, you know, deep down amazing on every level. And I see them two years later and I have a chat with them. And without asking, I can see in their eyes they have not moved forward at all. Yeah. And the amount of people that we've just opened the doors for Fat Loss for Life again. And we've asked people to sort of share their stories, where they're at, where they're going, that kind of thing. And the amount of people, and it's probably 80%, the amount of people that have said, I know what to do. I know what to eat. I know I need to go to the gym and do X. I know I need to do this, but I haven't yet done it. I haven't chosen to do it. I haven't decided to do it. I haven't made a plan. I haven't got rid of that limiting aspect of my lifestyle that is currently holding me back. 
whether that is someone really close and painful like a parent or a loved one like your partner or it's just the monkey in your brain or whether it's something that happened in your childhood and it's your fear of failure or it's just your inability to control your fast chip eating hands I don't know but if all of you are sitting here right now and go I choose to do this in 2017 and I'm going to choose not to let this person or this scenario or this problem get in my way then I will meet far more of you over 2617 that will be high-fiving the shit out of my hand saying thank you Ben for saying it's my turn to choose myself because it, it is that time and I, I, I'm fed up only because it makes me disheartened of meeting people that do not decide to choose themselves over other people and over situations when life is about yourself it is at its most inner deep rooted brutal core your main aim is yourself it's not other people they come a second and in some people's life in some people they come a close second and that's absolutely fine but ultimately life is about you and unless you start to choose yourself like i can't help rachel can't help none of us can help unless you choose yourself then you choose to go out and find the information that you need to progress yourself and you then really make it happen yeah i agree so in terms of health and personally what's happening in 2017 for you Ben? well looking at 2016 uh my goal was just to rebalance my body i spent a lot of time in the gym just sorting things out like really making my back strong again after injuring it and then getting the pain really trying to open my hips and nail a bit more movement i'm moving a lot better I'm by no means perfect i do need more time on my mobility i make time for mobility i need to make more time for mobility 2017 the first quarter i've decided i want to lay down a lot more muscle I've, I've been a year of just, you know, strengthening and rebalancing. I want to put some timber back on. Um, I really want to try and move my muscle mass up more. What it looks like after that, I don't know. Um, I have considered stopping playing rugby after the season. Whether that will happen or not, I don't know. Um, as I start to look at other areas of my career and how things are progressing for me, on a personal level because rugby is a big commitment it is a big mm -hmm. commitment tuesday thursday night every week that's four hours of my evening gone traveling to rugby doing it getting home showered all that shit saturday you know it's most weekends it is a big commitment and it's a commitment that i enjoy but there are moments when i say is this the right way to be spending my time for my bigger life goals and my yeah. bigger you know because for example there's some weeks i can only really get in the gym twice a week i'm beaten up i'm sore you know, that holds my body back. Does that hold my career back? So they're things that I need to consider. So for me, it's a bit of muscle and then I'll just evolve and move after that. Um, what about you kind of health training wise diet? Yeah, kind of similar really, you know, like I haven't, you know, my body hasn't been a, um, you know, I don't really have specific goals in terms of like, you know, I, I don't, I don't really train for fat loss. I don't really train for hypertrophy. I just train for health now. Um, I have much bigger life goals. Uh, my body's kind of um, in a, a in a good space. You know, I, I've kind of maintained it exactly where it is for the past sort of 18 months. Um, I've changed. I've, of course, always like looking to, I, I guess, you know, keep my, my delta, my glutes full. Um, but apart from that, you know, like I have much bigger life goals. I think for me, training is, you know, I, I lift four to five times a week, depending on the, the phase that I'm in. Um, and I just walk and I, I enjoy my walking. And so for me, it's um, in, in terms of nutrition, um, obviously, again, it's something I don't really think about anymore. But, you know, making sure that I'm eating, you know, FODMAP free foods, um, maintaining a good nourishing and healthy diet for, um, you know, my IBS managing that i'm actually going to do i've done a couple more tests this year um i've consulted with a few um more people um, about that so i've kind of like digging a little deeper um and i'm going to see um a gastroenterologist again now in january to have another push um see if i can get to the bottom of it but um apart from that you know there's there's kind of bigger life goals um in terms of you know just, just maintenance, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah. On a diet perspective, uh, there's one thing I've decided to do 
uh, even the next time I go shopping, I haven't gone shopping yet because I'm still eating leftovers from Christmas, um, <laughs> is to simplify my diet a lot more in that I've now decided that I'm going to eat uh, two different breakfasts a week, uh, roughly three different lunches, and then I will get um, a couple of snacks that I'll have. I used to try and get too much variety in my diet, and variety takes a little bit more time it takes a little bit more organization and you know what i just want to get up in the morning i want to have breakfast sitting there for me uh i know what i want to know what i'm having so for example the next time i go shopping the two meals that i'm going to alternate between is sun-dried tomato eggs and egg salmon and spinach they're my two breakfasts i'm gonna just stick with uh, i love them if i get bored of them i'll then change them I'm going to do the same with lunch and then dinner's a bit more flexible. You know, I often eat out. Lizzie might cook. You know, I might grab something on the way home from training. But I eat very well, but I just want it to be more simple. Um, mm. I have been using food. I, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I've been using food prep companies on and off. Um, I go through stages of using them. And, you know, the, the time issue isn't there as long as I keep it really simple. You know, so I might go to a shop and I might buy 36 eggs, two packs of salmon, loads of tomatoes, and that is my breakfast. And I think people have this aversion to buying lots of one food. Sometimes it almost feels a bit weird that we should get one of that and one of that, one of that. Well, no, if I'm eating eggs all week for breakfast before I change it next week, I'm gonna buy 36 eggs. You know, it's, that's just the reality of what I need. Um, so for me, it's, it's kind of simplification. Um, actually is kind of looking again back at 2016 one of the other things that I've done is I've tried to remove as much as humanly possible in my life that is a maybe and if it's not a definite yes I've got rid of it so there's things that I've started books that I've decided to write just loads of little things and if it's not 100% categorical jump up and down high five then I've got rid of it and the annoying thing is it's taken a lot of time to get rid of a lot of this stuff because I'd created an infrastructure around it but I want my life to be really simple going forward I want to be able to focus on body type nutrition and the education we deliver to the world I want my message to be clear and what I deliver to the world I want awesome supplements to be in every fucking gym in the world you know you know I've got a clear mission and just everything on the peripheral is just holding me back um, and I'm really good at doing that in my personal life uh, just simplifying everything like I don't have junk in my house I don't have anything you know, if things lie around in our house, it gets thrown out. I don't need things, but I wasn't doing it enough in kind of my business and professional life. So I've kind of really worked on that as well. That's awesome. Simplification. And actually, there's a, there's a great book. I've mentioned it on the podcast before. It's called Essentialism. And that's great book. the, yeah, that's, that's an awesome book, Essentialism. And it's the, um, it's the, you only go by the bare essentials. Um, in, in life and business. So, um, professionally, what's happening professionally in 2017? What's happening with awesome supplements? What's happening with body type nutrition? Uh, basically, I'm going to be spending a lot more time on them and in them. Um, I'm going to be working more closely with the team, uh, which I didn't do enough in 2016. And, you know, again, that's another reflection for me. I want to make sure that we are innovating every step of the way. We're now re rebuilding like just so much to make it more user interactive, more friendly, uh, more digestible, give you know students more option for their learning. Um, just go kind of all in on the big things that I've created. Um, and off, yeah. off the side of that, the only things that I'm really going to be doing differently is I'm going to be getting involved in a lot more media. Um, a lot more kind of high level uh, video work, a lot more kind of low level video work as well, documenting more of what I'm doing um, and writing more books. How to be an awesome personal trainer will come out mid January 2017. I've then already got a part two planned. Um, and then the second half of 2017 will be me doing a lot of public speaking. Look, if you're sitting there right now and think, oh, I'd love Ben to speak in my gym or my organisation or at my conference, get in touch with me because public speaking is a big thing I want to push next year. It's my passion. I love being on stage. I love presenting in front of people. I love being able to inspire. It's where I feel alive. Um, and then, yeah, the back end of 2017, I hopefully will see my work move more into the mainstream as I start to push 
more into the mainstream. But for me right now, it's about going all in on what I've created, innovating for the people that I want, sorry, innovating for the people that have chosen to choose themselves. We've already talked about that today. So if you are choosing like yourself, you know, to be better educated or to be slimmer or faster or bigger or whatever, then I'm going to help you on that journey. Um, and that, yeah, that's roughly my plan for 2017. It obviously is a bit more tangible on my end, but that's roughly it. What Very about cool. You? Well, in a... Inevitably for me, there'll be uh, more travel again in 2017. Uh, I'm not prepared to sit still just yet. Um, so I'll be sort of still back and forth between Australia and in, in Sydney, London, and also in the Middle East as well. Um, so we're actually um, expanding Chase Life next year. So it's not just going to be online. So we have, um, we're going to have live events as well. So we'll be running, um, we've got two plans. Um, one down in Sydney and one in London so those will be sort of three to, to five day events where it's in the room it's a full immersion um, and it's a, it will be an ultimately a life-changing event and then we also have um, I've um, just released as well um, uh, what we call the uber elite of coaching so we've got Chase Life Elite which is a 12-month mental program with us so um, that will be by invitation only um, which will be also it's um, you know that's we're going to go through body business lifestyle relationships it's an all-inclusive it's a full hit of 12 months to take somebody from where you are right now to the person that you want to be with with an intense level of coaching um and then obviously we've got athletic fox which is my of course my baby um my uh the athletic fox blueprint we're looking to to scale next year um, i'm going to change up some of the con as well um, I believe too many women are still doing too much um, training uh, well over training still under eating so you know I'm going to change a lot of the content next year in the Athletic Fox Blueprint to reflect I guess my involvement in the fitness industry and to reflect that the nature of um, the, the types of women um, that I work with now um, I started working with I want to say bikini girls but you know that bikini body market so I started with that many years ago then you know and that's that slowly evolved and now working with um, you know some uh, more sort of director and exec level women and uh, entrepreneurs, so it's very cool. There's a, a lot of change, um, you know, a lot of change personally as well. Uh, don't know where we're going to live next year. We're sort of tying up between between you know London, Dubai, and Sydney. So who knows? So now watch this space, but it's all very cool, very exciting, and no doubt there will be a lot of challenges <laughs> along the way and relentless problem solving. So bring it on. I think the only other thing that otherwise people can expect from me uh, going into 2017 is I'm going to start, I think, diversifying what I'm going to talk about. I think I mentioned this on a previous podcast, but there's so much that I kind of, I am a nutritionist, that is primarily my thing, um, but I'm also very well versed in mindset, training. I don't really talk about training that much, especially on social media. I don't really talk about kind of life stuff and business stuff much and I'm going to start talking about that more I feel I've got a lot of value mm. to give and I feel that I hold back a lot of the things that I can help other people with by saying oh well I'm just you know I'm the nutritionist or I'm that guy and actually I don't give a fuck anymore if I think I help I'm going to help I'm going to say it um because I think you know some of the words that I say can be very powerful for a lot of people so I think just expect a bit more variety from me. It doesn't mean I'm going to lose anything that we've been doing, the nutrition, the training, all that kind of stuff. None of that's going to go. It's just I'm going to add and I'm going to start to talk about different angles because I suppose as you age, life life just gets different, right? Life gets less yeah. insular. Life gets less about you and your body and it becomes a lot more about your life journey, uh, where you're going, what you want to do, money, business, like it all, it becomes all encompassing. It's like, you know, 20, uh, 23, I would have been just about going out, working hard, working on my body and that's it. Whereas now my life is very different because I'm just older, shit changes. So I think I'm going to share a bit more of that. I'm going to evolve that. So just expect it on the podcast, expect it in different formats. And uh, I think if I just want to, wrap everything up from today um i often get asked like how i have the time to do things and rachel will get the same question a lot how i get the time to do things how i you know separate x y and z and 
you know, sometimes there isn't just a perfect formula. Sometimes the answer is just fucking hard work. You know, mm. don't get me wrong. I work a lot more intelligently than I did, let's say, five years ago. I have a lot more structure in my day. I'm a lot more organized. I know what I'm doing, my training, my diet, you know, my professional work life, my personal life. Um, but I still work pretty hard at what I do. I'm passionate about it. You know, I get up on a Monday and I work pretty much all day and all night, apart from walking the dog and going to the gym on a Monday because it's the day when things go off and I've got tons of energy. You know, Tuesday I work a pretty long... You know, I, I put the hours in. So sometimes, mm. you know, the only real answer is hard work. And if you're not sure whether you're doing the right thing at any given time, the answer is still hard work because the quicker you get to where you think you want to go, the quicker you will learn, oh, actually, that's not where I want to go. And that's where you change direction. So really, you've just got to get stuck in and spin your wheel. So I think if I was going to underpin two lessons that I want people to ca carry away from today is now is the time to choose yourself and work hard. Absolutely. It's nothing, nothing beats hard work, particularly when it's smart hard work. Exactly. And, you know, I, I'm exactly the same. There is only, you know, everyone has the same 24 hours in a day. It's down to you, you as to how you prioritize those hours and what you do in that time. <coughs> Excuse me. I had a frog in my throat then. <coughs> Let's not Excuse finish me. the episode with you dying. Back now. <laughs> uh, right. In that case, let's, I know. Oh, let's God. look sharp. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. I put my eyes are watering now because I'm trying to suppress a cough. Like you know when you try to suppress a laugh and it's like <clears throat> it spits outside. Anyway, don't cry. You, that's no. what there was the real emotion there. You were about to cry. You were shedding a tear for Ben. Oh, uh, uh, look. Just full disclosure. There've been a few tears of frustration this year. I can tell you, like a few tears of frustration, a few tears of oh my god, it's all so hard, and oh, you know, why am I doing this? But you know, it's it's very short lived. Um, it's short lived, and you know, I think it's a case of you know, you have some food, you go to bed, then you wake up the next day, and you're like, what the fuck was I crying about last night? Just you know, suck it up, harden up. You've chosen this, you've chosen this life, you've chosen this career, you've chosen, you've chosen this. So deal with it. Yep, sometimes a day is just a day and a new day will be a new day. Right, yeah, we're going to end the podcast. Uh, we were going to tie in some questions, but we decided to talk about ourselves a lot. <laughs> so, um, Evil laughs. By the way, that's what, one thing I was going to say. On the, on the topic of hard work, you know, both Ben and I were up at 5am this morning on WhatsApp at 5.30. So, you know, there's, there's you know, working all hours, as they say. <laughs> Yeah, I was up at five. Um, taking names. Anyway, right, I'm not sure when me and Rachel will be back because Rachel's off on her honeymoon and we will hook I up am. after that. Um, otherwise, there'll be some amazing guests coming up on the show. Uh, we had some great guests over Christmas time. This is now a new year. It's 2017. Get stuck in. Make your plans. Choose yourself. Make shit happen. And me and Rachel will check in with you soon. Rachel, that is us. We are off. Ciao from me. It is goodbye. Um, and if you need to know anything else, you want to explore things, look up Rachel Guy online, look up Ben Coomber online, look up anything that we do if you want to find more. Otherwise, you know where we are. Have an awesome day and goodbye. Hey everyone, Ben Cooper Radio, episode number 239, uh, and today's show is going to...